Guys, the day is finally here. We are road tripping right now to Corbin, Kentucky. Left very early this morning, said goodbye to the dogs and everything. Hit the road at about three o'clock. I don't like waking up super early, but the nice thing, literally no one on the road. So we are on the outskirts right now of Gadsden, Alabama. Filled up the trade in Tacoma for the first time. This truck right now is getting about 17.4 miles per gallon. So super excited to see what the new truck gets once we get there and we start road tripping all the way back. After that fill up, the truck recalibrated itself 277 miles. And so I failed on documenting the miles per gallon before filling up. However, it was about 17.3 to 17.4. It was at 18 for a little bit until I put the truck into cruise control. Now this third gen Tacoma doesn't really like cruise control that much. When I was in cruise control, it really wanted to hang out in fifth gear. Sometimes with slight inclines, it would downshift into fourth gear. That is the notorious thing with this third gen and it's why I'm so excited and that's why I wanted an automatic fourth gen was just to see how good that eight speed was in that next generation of vehicle. Got the car link kit playing. And it's really cool to have videos on in the background to pass time for a long road trip. But what it is is this guys, it's the car link kit, it's this little box. And for the fourth gen Tacoma, it's cool because it just plugs in with the USB-C right there and we can store it on the shelf. But essentially what it is, is if your car has Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it'll turn your screen into a tablet which is awesome for road trips because in the background you guys can have stuff like netflix and you can download shows onto it if you want you could see i have a micro sd card up in this or you could do a sim card in it too so you could do netflix stuff go home with that right there you can see too that we have youtube here you have the play store if you need stuff basically this is a giant 14 inch tablet, which is really cool. So we can go to YouTube, you can use stuff off of Wi-Fi, or also you can go to your downloads. This is how it would work if you just had stuff. It's really snappy too, honestly. I'm gonna go back here, back to the home screen. So you can set it up with a whole bunch of stuff. But the cool thing is too, is if you have wired CarPlay with your car, this essentially allows it to be wireless CarPlay. So in the third gen Tacoma on my drive out there, I was using this. I had wireless CarPlay going and also the videos and stuff too. Now again, I don't recommend watching videos while driving. It's just nice to have something there to glance down maybe every once in a while to really help pass the time. So if you guys think that this is cool, cause it's really cool. I had something like that, the Benizi one that I use in the Tundra, it was fine, little bit glitchy sometimes. This one was rock solid, the whole drive with this fourth gen and also with the third gen. I will leave a link to this down in the description for you guys with also an 18% off discount code. And if you guys wanna comment, car link kit, John, your new Tacoma is awesome or whatever you guys want to see about my new Tacoma, I will be picking two winners down in the comment section. All right, let's get back to the video. Before we get it, I just wanted to document on here for myself and for you guys, driving position in the Tacoma. We all know that it is a thing with the third gen, but like, take a look at my knee. Right, and this is just me cruising. Steering wheel, as high as it can go. Seat, as low as it can go. Uh, and speaking of the seat too, I've been driving for probably close to six hours now, six and a half hours. I've had the seat heater on for a good bit of it. Uh, the cushioning feels like it's kind of just done, right? Like my butt has sat in it as long as it can and the cushion's just done. And my back, I am definitely feeling a little bit of fatigue. Not horrible, like from what some people complain about, but uh, it's definitely starting to get to the limits at like six and a half, almost seven hours. Kind of crazy, can drive for eight and a half hours. And of course, when we're eight miles away, <laughs> we got traffic, the first bit of traffic. Hope everyone's okay and stuff, but holy smokes, man. Yeah, I don't know. But we got, for this last little stretch, 18 miles per gallon. It may go down a little bit uh, as we continue to drive. All right, we made it, Toyota. Don Franklin. I don't see the truck out here anywhere, so I'm just gonna park. The destination park. is on your right. Yep, I'm right Don here. Don Franklin, Toyota Corbin. Well, hello, beautiful. You know how they say, uh, if it's raining when you pick up a car, it's usually meant to be, well, 
It's freaking like snow flurries here, guys. And of course, I'm in shorts because when I left Florida, it was 65 degrees and now it's like 39. There's my salesman, Derek. He was super awesome. He's putting the temp tag on and we're about to take the truck into the uh, service bay over there so we can film it. So here's our Tacoma for the channel, guys. A 2024 Tier D Off-Road Premium in underground color. And you might be thinking, whoa, this isn't solar octane. Story for another time. Huge shout out to Don Franklin up here in Corbin, Kentucky for this truck. I will leave Derek Young's information in the description if you guys are in the area or also out of state and looking for a Toyota, you guys can hit him up. I will leave all of his information down there. So sad to see the TRD Pro go, but on to newer and better things, right? So it's the TRD Off-Road Premium. So we have all the goodies. We'll go over in full detail everything on the truck and also the sticker in another video. But this one is about the whole road trip and on our way back, right? We got to see how this truck performs on the way back, but we have the full premium interior, the digital mirror, 14 inch screen, which we're gonna use that whole car link kit on the way home too, to work out. We're gonna see what type of miles per gallon we get out of this four cylinder, how far we can get with it. And also I'm excited because the sun, the sun should be setting soon. I think it's, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 344. I was gonna try to bonsai all the way back home, but I think close to 19 hours of driving when I got up at a, 2 a.m. probably won't be smart, so we're gonna go get some food first. But I am excited to use the manual uh, leveling headlights and also see how these premium kind of uh, LED headlights perform on the Tacoma. But initial impressions, guys, what do you think about this underground color? It was my second choice over Solar Octane, and weirdly, I'm not sure if it's, I'm not sure if it's because like I am here physically with the truck right now and we signed all the paperwork and stuff but I think I'm weirdly more excited for the underground than I was Solar Octane. But let's go ahead and get in the truck now and start our road trip home. But I was able to reset the tank average. All I do is just go ahead and hold okay. And I'm definitely gonna have to get used to this because you could change it to whatever you want, but I had to hold and reset. Boom, it reset to zero. So we will see what the truck's MPG is as we start driving. Now, I'm not gonna lie, guys, I am like extremely tired because I left the house at like 2 a.m. and I was super hyped, we got the trucks, I was BSing with the salesman, uh, Derek here, and uh, the GM and everything too, and uh, it hit me. So I think I'm just gonna go get some cookout. John, that's not your carnivore diet, <laughs> I know, uh, but I'm starving. I am starving and we don't have cookout in our area and I'm going hardcore carnivore. Uh, when we get back home. Oh yeah, we're gonna be used, we're gonna be using that carista thing <laughs> to turn that off, that's ridiculous. A huge thank you to Don Franklin Toyota guys. Uh, there's not many of these trucks out on uh, dealer lots right now, man. Super hard to find. Uh, again, we will go over all the pricing and everything on the Monroney later, which I actually need to take that off before I start driving. But priority number one, after taking that off, is food. They do have a lot of uh, Tundras here too, which is nice. So I wanted to document this. I'm not sure what the grade is of this hill, but, but we're carrying at 71 miles an hour under 2000 RPM. I'm not exactly sure what gear we're in, but you know, passing semi trucks on the left hand side. These uh, same little mountains, this is right as you enter Tennessee uh, with the third gen, man. I mean, we'll see what this truck gets up to and I'll keep you guys documented, but the third gen, it screamed 4,000 at one point, bro. And this truck is, I'm still at 70 miles an hour and I'm still continuing up this grade. And we are at 1800 RPM. It's, it's criminal how much better this powertrain is than the third gen. It's absolutely insane. Third gen bulletproof, I get it guys. But just drivability wise, absolutely wild. It's, you know, still slight grade getting back up to uh getting back up to 70 but still you know just cruising well good morning there beautiful so we made it all the way to gadsden alabama last night i tried to truck the whole way to florida but 15 hours on the road had to start to listen to myself my butt <laughs> was starting to hurt nothing against like these seats these seats are actually pretty comfortable in the tacoma but uh being just seated for 
you know, 15 hours takes its toll. And I do have back problems, but we are going to go get gas because we are at 23 miles per gallon average right now. So that was when I reset that at the dealership. And then I also let the truck idle for a while at the dealership. I went to cookout as well, posted a TikTok while in the uh, driveway with the truck on as well. So decent amount of idle time, but going at 70 to 75 through the grades of um, Tennessee, like when we got to Tennessee, this truck, night and day difference, like I said, than the third jet. But we're gonna go get gas, and then we're gonna take the Tacoma for its first official test. Filling up at the Circle K, and check this out. The Tacoma has a little uh, thingamajiggy right here for the gas cap. Mind blowing, right? But the third gen, it doesn't have that. So this is a very popular mod to do with the third gen. Also, I freaking hate tire shine, man. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reset the trip again. We have to, and the range also just reset itself to 299. So almost 300 miles of range out of this uh, Tacoma. That's about the same-ish, maybe 20 miles more than my third gen when it was averaging 18 miles per gallon. I do wish uh, that this tank in this Tacoma was a bit bigger. Yes, it gets better fuel efficiency, but it would be nice to also have like a 22 gallon tank with that nice fuel efficiency. But we have a test to take the Tacoma on right now. Yep, it's a Starbucks crawler. So I don't typically drink coffee anymore, guys. However, uh, tripping back to Florida kind of makes me want it. And before you say, eh, John, coffee's supposed to be black. Four shots of espresso, heavy whipping cream, and water, that's all I do. Don't like all the foo-foo stuff because sugar's bad for you guys. Got another 312 miles, four hours and 40 minutes. And I love this 14 inch screen on the Tacoma that they kept this so you can get rid of that, I think by going like that for the car play or you could bring it back. So my Tundra doesn't have that, um, but yeah, you can easily get to all the actual Toyota stuff right here and then just back to car play. Something so simple, but was just missed for some reason on the Tundra. All right guys, we have to play the trust game. I was messing with the gauges because they're fully customizable and I accidentally reset the gauge on the right hand side. So I was trying to find the trip on here. Uh, it's deep within the gauges, there's no physical button. So I was trying to find the trip so I could do like a calculated MPG test for you guys in the future and I accidentally reset the total average. So it was at 19.5, so we're playing the trust game here, okay? It was at 19.5, we'll see how many miles I did since I made that last clip, um, but yeah, we're just playing the trust game, okay? Because not only was I messing with them to find how to do the trip, but I was also trying to see what my PSI was on my tires because I didn't know if they're just not balanced properly because there's kind of like a micro vibration. Not horrible because these roads are not the best going through uh, Alabama right here, but there's kind of like a micro vibration Bro, these tires are at like 52 pounds right now. So they're about 20 PSI overinflated. And as I drive and they heat up more, they're just gonna kind of increment a little bit more in PSI. So I, I'm tempted to almost pull over and like bring it back down to like 32, 35 PSI. All right, so I just pulled off the highway, got the truck uh, in accessory mode right now. Oh, and it can't pick up the tires. So we're gonna go ahead and have to turn on the truck and see where we're at. And I'm just gonna air down uh, the tires because they were at 52. I'm not sure why it's not loading now. Okay, it did. So I had to roll forward a little bit. So I'm gonna catch this next exit right here. So yeah, guys, 52 pounds or 52 PSI, I should say, in the tires. So I wish that there was, kind of like the Colorado does, how you could have a preset PSI and I'm not gonna go look through the, uh, the manual. So if it's here, good job, Toyota. But I wanna preset a PSI to whatever the door says um, and then air down with like a rock or something that I find up here and uh, the truck will honk at you uh, because the Colorado does that. Oh, we got some mud. Wow. Because <laughs> um, the Colorado does that and then, you know, you could just air down without coming in to like look at your stuff and whatnot and the truck will honk so then you know you're at that PSI. You can see on the door for my truck, it says uh, cold tire pressure recommended 30 PSI, bro. So we are, <laughs> we are way over. So I mean, aside from this, and this is like no fault on Toyota and stuff. I know a lot of stuff, this has probably happened at the port or something. Um, and then it's whatever, it's all good. But aside from that, this truck has been absolutely incredible. I, I just love everything about this truck. And hopefully once we air down, uh, it'll, <laughs> It'll be even better. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 
25. And that looks like it brought it down six PSI. So I'll just do like another, oh, went, yeah, so it's bouncing back and forth. So six PSI for about 25 seconds. We'll just do another 45 seconds maybe. So guys, we have Ghosted TRD on the phone. What's up, man? What's going on, you guys? <laughs> so he was helping us troubleshoot just like I was talking, but now we go into settings. So you guys can see I lowered the uh, PSI down on the truck. And if you go into settings here, uh, the uh, TPWS settings, you see that the tire light's on. So we're gonna go to tire pressure setting and then we can be setting by a specific pressure. So you could change it all up in here, which I'm gonna do 30 because the truck is at 30 and then our light, oh, it, oh, it does each one. Specific pressure, yes. Boom, dude, it went away. Uh, it's flashing at me, so it may want me to drive or we may turn it off, but it did work, actually. So, yeah. So, Jace said that his truck, guys, was at 30 PSI. He was awesome, and he backed out of the garage for me to double-check his truck. So, for some reason, this truck was just set to 50, so hopefully it's a it's a better drive. So, bro, I appreciate it. All right, so already much better, and the steering wheel before, even on this decently paved highway here, it was kind of like micro vibrating as well. So we're definitely a lot better, but all that idle time killed our MPG. So we're at 19.7 now instead of the 23 when we turned the truck off. I mean, this is all real world, right? So I was pulled over talking to Jace for probably 25 minutes and I had to leave the truck running because that's the only way that it would pick up the PSI for me. So definitely if your truck is riding or any vehicle that you buy for some reason, it just don't feel right. Uh, just just check your stuff. I, I probably did 150 to 200 miles on 50 PSI, which isn't horrible, but like the max PSI, so the max PSI weirdly on those tires, we were still within spec because the max PSI on those tires was 51 PSI, but the door of the truck reads 30. And then Jace, he was awesome and he got in his truck and backed it out of the uh, garage and stuff. And then he verified that his truck was all reading at 30 PSI too, so. You guys ready? Boom, Florida. <laughs> like the change in the tarmac and everything and we got palm trees. I just love how Florida freaking welcomes people, man. And this whole road is just completely paved. I mean, duh, it's completely paved, but like just brand new. Still, we got still palm trees and stuff all over here. Just nice pines and everything. It looks awesome. So last bit of driving. I think I have like an hour or so left in the truck. So I've driven the new Tacoma now for eight hours, eight hours on the highway. And I failed to mention just how great the seating position is. Remember in the last truck, how I was just all up on the steering wheel. This one here had tons of room. Cruise control in this truck did not dip the MPGs at all like it did on the other truck. And I think there was maybe one time where the truck had to go close to 3000 RPMs and that was me passing a semi truck like on a grade just to not be behind a fleet of freaking people right behind me. But the acoustic glass, this truck has acoustic glass, which my Tundra does not. I cannot, like I barely hear cars go past me at all. It's really nice. And then also the wind noise at 70 miles an hour. Not overly the top of wind noise, if that's even like a freaking statement, but the wind noise is not bad for a truck, like another brick going through the air. So let's get my wife's first initial impressions now to close out the video on what she thinks of this new Tacoma. All right, and we are home with the Tacoma. So we are at 22.7 miles per gallon after I accidentally reset it. And the range left on this tank, 51 miles. So what do you think? I really like it. It is literally like a mini Tundra in here. But you even feel that way. Like as you're driving, I forget that it's a Tacoma. It's a smaller vehicle. But it's because the steering wheel is the same. The 14 inch screen. I mean, it's a better digital dash, but just everything. It just feels so much bigger. You got your grab bar here. Yeah. It's a huge improvement over the last one. But like just the inside alone, like holy smokes, it's a Tacoma. Press the same button you do on the Tundra. Whoa, wow. crazy. Does it go up too? Yeah, you could press it with the button or like with your knee. Press what with my knee? The ah. tailgate itself, yeah, like you just bump it and it'll like close. Like kickstart SUV? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Sorry, And then there's also a button on the passenger side too. 
I kind of go up like a little oh, bit with that's it. that's cool. So if your hands are full or whatever, like when you empty it. You don't have to set anything down. No. How's the back seat space? Uh, some people don't like it. I mean, it's it's a mid-sized truck, but. Do these fold up or up this way? Up that way. Same as the Tundra, which I don't oh, really wait, like. It how it's Yeah, that's how it snaps in there. I don't really care for that. I mean, you're a five one, so anything to use spacious. I wouldn't call this spacious. The whole drive, it was pretty solid. This glass here, it's tempered glass, whereas that front glass is acoustic, which you can only get on like the $80,000 Tundras, which is ridiculous. Cause if you hit this glass, like compared to the Tundras glass, like just knock on that. Oh, it's like the Sequoise. Yeah. So that's how the Tundras is. Cause it's just tempered glass. Dense. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty nice. I have shelving right there, which I love. So, oh, you, so you see the center speaker right there? Yes. You see the little arrow in the front of it? Press that. No way. <laughs> Is it a portable? So if we take the truck to the beach, your phone's already done Bluetooth because it's with the truck anyways. And then you just play music and it's always charging. So you just spent tens of thousands of dollars for a yes, Bluetooth speaker? Yes, it's a $53,000 speaker. Yeah. That's what I bought. The truck was free. 